What's up everybody, Freems here. This video is going to show you the locations of all the clues in Max Payne 3. Uh, if you're looking for specific ones or specific chapters, uh, the times are all separated in the description. It will show you where each individual one is. So yeah, leave the video a like if you found this useful, and uh, subscribe if you want to see uh, videos of new walkthroughs and stuff like this coming quite frequently. So uh, yeah, thank you all once again. Have a great day, thanks for watching, and take care. It was a luxury I couldn't afford. Poor bastard's name was Claudio. I found out later he was a pretty big shot soccer player for the Galatians. Some nearly superstar just back from Europe. The usual. Scored goals, scored girls. The only box he'd be getting into now was the one he'd be leaving in. It was your typical trendy hellhole. A playground for the overpreened and undernourished. Sushi and house music and vodka. A place you don't get through the door unless you're rich, beautiful, or in this instance, it seemed, a heavily armed psychopath. Ah, don't shoot, por favor. You an American? Sure. Yeah, I'm from Steele, North Dakota, just outside of Bismarck. Anders Detling. This is some place, huh? They, they told me it was a little fresh, but I wasn't expecting things to be quite like this. No? No, see, I've, I've seen things. I was a cop for 25 years. I've seen men run over by combines. I've seen husbands who just ate their wives, but a gunfight at a disco? You were a cop? Yeah, just retired. Oh, what a life that was. And it gave me the money to raise a family. Oh, I got a girl at college in Wisconsin and a boy who's playing football for Minnesota State. You want to see their picture? No, no, that's all right. Oh. Sounds nice. Listen, you're staying here. Don't be a hero. Oh, I won't. I'm retired. Happy, healthy ex-cop? Give me a break. It looked loud and expensive enough to be Fabiana's. Her fashion sense didn't leave a whole lot of room for imagination, let alone food. The girl sure knew how to draw the eye. And maybe that was the problem. But at least I was heading in the right direction. I had no choice but to keep pushing forward. Victor's political campaign was starting to come unstuck. Seemed the Broncos' luck was on the turn. If only that was the worst news they'd received that day. This was a mess. Where the hell was Passos? We were two failed cops failing miserably at being bodyguards. He approached every... It was Giovanna's necklace. Now I just had to find the rest of her. Mr. Victor Bronco. For all his friends in high places, he had just as many enemies. Our three million dollar man had locked the doors behind him. Luckily for us, the blood money was still bleeding. The smell in this... What was I... Claudio, their golden boy. He'd sure picked the wrong party on the wrong night. Although if the past week was anything to go by, it was safe to assume any party with the Broncos in attendance was the wrong one to be at. Must have forgotten about those. This old guy, my days of playing dress up were over. I wasn't some gallant knight. I didn't need a shield. The apartment made me wish I'd got to know him better. 
It made for interesting reading. If I'd been given a few more years looking into the bottom of a glass, I might have been on the same page. Looked like he was keeping an eye on me. Must have thought we were kindred spirits. More and more, I think he was right. Looked like Passos had brought us to the right place. That was the chopper the Commando Sombra used to escape the nightclub attack. If Fabiana wasn't around here, then at least someone that knew where she was had to be. They probably made their ransom notes from the same glossy magazines they used to select their victims. This was a second request for payment. The best of intentions at the stadium weren't enough to cover it. They'd been making a reality show starring Sao Paulo's favorite housewife. Probably thought it would grease the wheels with the ransom money, but it only made me want to shove the cash down their throats. It seems Serrano's boys had targeted the entire Bronco family and didn't give a shit which one they pinched. These were the floor plans to the nightclub. Seemed Mr. Serrano liked to be prepared. Proper little boy scout. Serrano was reading his reviews. Vain chump. The newspaper was plastered with the news of the first kidnapping attempt. I didn't have time to thumb through the old phrase book Portuguese, but it looked like Victor was asking for campaign contributions. Rodrigo held the family purse strings, and by the looks of it, he held them pretty tight. They'd been keeping an eye on Fabiana from afar. Shame they'd been more interested in supposed infidelities than thugs sizing her up for a snatch. It was a lot shinier than a favela, and rent would be easier to collect. Maybe Bronco would take pity on all the poor bastards who got evicted. I just had to keep him alive to find out. Security system, stop real security! Graduation shots of Rodrigo, Victor, and Marcelo, educated at rich kid finishing schools all over Europe. No wonder they had the common touch. I was in no state to save his body from the flames. I hadn't saved him from the gunman either. I'm sorry, kid. Hey, are you lost? In more ways than I could possibly explain. I know you. At the disco with the gun. Yeah, you had hair back then and better clothes. Uh, Anders Dudling from Steel, North Dakota. Why on earth are you here? Well, I'm, uh, looking for someone. What are you doing here? Oh, we, we came to help the cause. See, after I retired, my wife, she said I had to do something. And, well, you know, I always loved kids, so I got involved in Angels of the Hill. Oh, it's a great cause, and they're really great folk, and, well, now we come down twice a year to help inoculate the children of the favelas. Yeah, oh, simply wonderful giving back. Whole family does it. Heck, my, my little girl's coming in a couple of days. 
Aren't you afraid? Ah, I was a cop for 25 years. Hey, granted, steel ain't San Paolo, but, you know, I've seen things. And people are the same everywhere, good, bad, and different. Listen, have you heard anything about a, a woman about 28, rich? She was kidnapped. I heard she was being held around here. No. All right, well, good luck. All right, you too. You look like you need it. I gotta get back at it. Hey, right, I'll say a prayer for you. Another life lesson I didn't. Serrano, the man of the hour. Had De Silva left this there on purpose as some passive aggressive message to the CS from a cop who was apparently too scared to go near any real criminals? No shooting! Por favor, amigo! No, no! Relax, soldier. You're American? Oh, jeez, buddy. Am I glad to see you? Oh, fuck me. I've been coming to this shithole town for the last five years. It's like a fucking insane asylum. But it's got the cheapest pussy in the world. Oh, fuck me. I mean... You're in a cat house in the slum, pal, doing who knows what. I'm a businessman, bro, and, and they were fully legal in, in this country, I, I, th I think. And, and I know how to tip, all right? It ain't my fault, man. It ain't my fault. Don't, don't judge me, all right? Have a nice day. Jesus, what a fucking creep. You need to focus. Yet more thugs whose Christmas card list I wouldn't be on. This wasn't Commando Sombra real estate. I had to keep moving. Soccer had gotten Claudio away from the favela, but it hadn't gotten him far enough. I couldn't imagine his death had done much to boost the CS's approval ratings in that part of town. Say what you want about these hoods. They knew more about branding than a Madison Avenue art director. Tropa Z. Looked like Nova Esperanza had a civil war to add to its long list of reasons not to visit. Giovanna, charity worker and socialite. Work with the poor and play with the rich. You try to live in two worlds. Eventually, you're gonna get your life ripped apart. I'd seen enough. If these drugs didn't have a doctor's... Passos had told me about this stuff. Oxidado. They called it rust. Packed full of healthy ingredients like quicklime and kerosene. Cheaper, stronger, and deadlier than crack. Easily marketed to the poor and desperate. All in all, a fine, honorable way to earn a living. I was definitely in Commando Sombra territory. If Fabiana was still alive, she couldn't be far away. Detective Valerie Winterson. One of my bullets is buried down there with her. I tell myself it was a tragic misunderstanding, an awful mistake. I tell myself a lot of things. All of it crap. The truth was, it was her or Mona. And I made a very bad call. This was one decision of mine I buried deeper than all the others. Nicole Horn's mausoleum, the woman who ordered Michelle's death. I passed it whenever I came to see my wife. It felt appropriate to leave her some dead bodies instead of flowers. Uh! 
Vinny Gognetti. I didn't think there was enough of him left to fill a grave. Poor son of a bitch. His antics had brought the once great house of Punchinello to its knees, and they were still struggling to stand up. didn't seem too concerned with meeting their arrest quotas. Between me and Sao Paulo's finest, it'd be a miracle if the CS were still in business by the end of the day. Fifty-five. I'd seen that number before. Were these the same bloodthirsty motherfuckers that showed up after the shootout at the party? Man, I was guessing these guys didn't spend their spare time studying the Geneva Convention. An army of paramilitaries and only my face made the front page. More publicity I didn't need. She was Victor's political nemesis and, in all probability, Sao Paulo's next mayor. Even the Broncos couldn't afford that many votes. Still, psychos with a dream. That sort of bullshit. This was where Marcelo was supposed to be sleeping. He'd barely come down to this deck. Paso's had the name of the bar where I was drinking my life away. I should have put things together then, instead of waiting for De Silva to walk me through it real slow. The bed was made. I could only guess that Passos was upstairs in the thick of it, whatever it was. So this was the famous Panama Canal. We could have gone to the moon while I was passed out and I wouldn't have noticed. While I'd been dead to the world, some of my shipmates were just plain dead. Where had they taken them? After I got out of New Jersey, things had flared up again between the Punchinellos and the DeMarcos. Didn't look like things would die down anytime soon. I was gonna have to stay away from the only place I'd ever known. Whatever they were looking for appeared to be gone. Daphne Bernstein, a recent divorcee, making the most of her considerable settlement, and Marcella was making the most of her. I didn't... I don't want to think about it. It didn't make sense. Why would they leave the jewels and rip open the walls? It didn't occur to me just what the other cargo on board could be. Americans had a long and checkered history of involvement in Panama. This was my sorry chapter, for what it's worth. Either those guys wheeled their trash out on stretchers, or something was seriously wrong here. Ufe. Was there anything they didn't have a grubby hand in? A few days earlier, I'd have called it a coincidence, but I'd written off too many of those already. De Silva and I had the same fan club. I knew enough, and he knew too much. We'd both become targets. Passos' ID card. It was no great surprise he'd made their hit list, but to discover he was really Colombian? No wonder some locals seemed to laugh at his accent. What else had he lied to me about? But on 
off into the sunset too if I were him, but I was in too far now. It looked like Victor had won the sympathy vote, found his universal connection to the people, triumph out of tragedy. Part of me couldn't help thinking that had been his plan all along. Call it evidence for De Silva. Either Victor Bronco and Nevis were doing a lot of charity work together, or this was payment for something else. Were the crush of Prado in Victor's pocket? Had he tipped them off about the stadium exchange? drug squad had a few habits of its own. It was Monday's arrest log, as far as I could tell, and no sign of anybody from Nova Esperanza. All those poor bastards have been checked straight into the Imperial Palace Hotel. Becker's blood money from the good doctor. Serrano had canceled one side of that transaction. The other was on me. AUP. Those were the guys who jumped the yacht in Panama. And what was this? Had the Brazilian cops tipped them off about the money? Sao Paulo's own David and Goliath. I'd pinned De Silva as a coward, but he'd risked more than anyone. And he'd never taken a bribe. The CS were all but out of business in Sao Paulo, and suddenly Becker and Victor looked like local heroes in the war on crime. They'd really gotten their money's worth outsourcing their problems onto me. My old pal Serrano. We'd both been unwitting clowns in this sorry circus. Part of me hoped he'd made it out of that hotel alive. I didn't recognize the guy. Maybe this was the new slum king De Silva had talked about. A throne never stays empty for long. Fame at last. It was no great surprise I'd made Ufe's most wanted list. I hadn't done much to improve the reputation of Americans abroad over the past few weeks. And there they were, my illustrious employers, three dead and still, every chance I'd go four for four. None of this was going to look good on the resume. And I was in good company. Howell Passos, sent up north to find a washed up gringo who would act tough and play dumb. Boy, did he ever deliver. It was a little late to be thinking about precautions, but something told me this shit show was barely through the warm-up act. Oh, well, chaos and guns. I might have known you'd turn out. Sorry. You're heading home? Oh, I, I am here to 
Pick up my daughter, but I imagine she's stuck on the plane. Uh, what are you up to? I don't know. Trying to make a difference. Giving back. Yeah, well, that's what you call it. Take care. Yeah. This wasn't the kind of place where you waited to board a private jet. Victor and Becker were out in the departure lounge somewhere. Judgment with a smile. You can't beat it. <laughs>